It's fair to say that Volvo has pretty much cracked it when it comes to the premium market. You can now mention it in the same breath as BMW, Mercedes and Audi. But to really compete, you've got to have a compact executive arrival for the 3 Series, the A4 and the C-Class. And this is it, albeit in estate form. For now, there's a saloon coming later. But the new Volvo V60, yes, it is a V60, it's not a V90. They do look a little bit similar, but when you look at some of the detailing, they look a lot more different. So the Thor Hammer headlights, for example, breaking out the main headlamp unit, the more concave grille, the, the, the look that it's squatter and Volvo says more athletic and more dynamic. We'll be the judge about that. But most importantly, this is an estate car. It's a Volvo estate car. They call it the spiritual successor to the V70. So let's have a look at the back. The new V60 is actually 18 centimetres shorter than the V90 with some lovely detailing along the flanks and itty bitty Volvo shoulder line there. It's 13 centimetres longer than the old V60, a car that uh, I'd pretty much forgotten about and you've probably forgotten about as well. But what is important in a Volvo is of course the carrying capacity and this car boasts the class's biggest boot. Well, as you'd expect, it's a, a nice shape with a nice low entry point there for you to put your washing machines and stuff in. And of course the uh, seats fold very neatly at a touch of a button, but that's all terribly dull and sensible. What you wanna know is what it's like to drive. So let's go and find out. This is the D4 inscription model, which is Top of the range for now, D4 diesel, about 188 brake horsepower. There's also a D3 diesel with about 140, 748 brake horsepower as well. There's a petrol car and also potentially two, certainly one, what they call twin engine plug-in hybrid models. So anyway, diesel. Yeah, not bad. Decent amount of, uh, of poke, but what I really like about this car is it's just quite hushed quite quiet, particularly on a cruise. Now Volvo say, dangerous thing to say this, it is the most dynamic Volvo they've made. Mm. Uh, now Volvo's definition of, uh, of dynamism is slightly different to my definition of dynamism and it isn't. Yeah, sure, it steers okay. There's no feel through the steering and grip is good and body roll is, is pretty limited, but this, this is a comfortable cruiser. It's not a three series, but I don't mind that. You know, it does go through the corners okay. You're not gonna have a thrill a minute like you might do in a, a three series touring, but that's not what Volvos are about. You can put the drive mode down here into dynamic, it just adds a bit of weight to the steering, frankly, and sharpens up the, the throttle response. But this car is, is comfortable, great seats, great infotainment system. The cabin, quality-wise, not quite up to the Mercedes C-Class Audi A4 level, but it's pretty good. But the style is great, this fantastic touchscreen here which dominates the fascia, the tech on board, the wonderful Bowers and Wilkins uh, audio system. Trouble is, a lot of the stuff like Apple CarPlay as well, yep, those Swedes have learnt from the Germans and you have to pay for it all. All on the options list. What you do get though is a comfortable car, sat nav standard on every model, more space in the back for passengers than you'll get in rival cars, and the biggest boot too. Pricing at the moment, this car at the top of the range sits around £37,000, starts around £31,000. Who knows when the uh, the plug-in hybrids come and I think they could possibly be the ones to go for, probably a little bit more expensive. Let's be honest, it's all down to the monthlies and that's where Volvo needs to be competitive. Oh yes, there's one other thing I needed to tell you about. This obviously is where the V60 is at its best on a motorway. I'm doing around 70 miles an hour and I have pilot assist engaged. Now that means the car will keep a set distance from the vehicle in front, in this case a transporter, which it's just slowing down for, and it will stay within its lanes. Now I'm gonna overtake. I'm not touching the, uh, the accelerator at all. I've just changed lanes. It's picked up that I'm in the lanes and I can drive hands-free. Now I mustn't. I've got to be in control at all times and this car will beep at me if I take my hands off the steering wheel. But it's just, it just adds a bit of relaxation to the drive. So clever. I love the tech. 
and it's really, really good and simple to use. It combines with a great ride. This car's on 19 inch wheels, optional. It'll be better on the standard 18s or 17s, but it's pretty good. The gearbox is great, just slips through the cogs, and it's, it's just, what a cool place to be. I think Volvo have got another winner on their hands, but hear me out here because it's not as good to drive as a BMW 3 Series. It's not as well built as an Audi A4. So why do I like it so much? Well, it's because it's different and different is good. It's got style, it has got quality, it's got comfort and refinement. And for most people, most of the time, that's what they want. And this delivers all that in spades with loads of tech on board, loads of safety. And it's just cool. Those Swedes are cool guys, aren't they? Now, don't forget to leave your comments in the bit below here about the car, not about me. I've heard it all before. And hit our subscribe button and watch some more videos because you never know, you might enjoy it. <laughs>